three, two, and the uh, one. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my speed run. My name is Primoso Sterra, and I'm one of the only two runners of Afogato, which is a game that came out last year. And it's well, it's gonna be a doozy, doozy. So I'm just gonna check a couple of things first soon to understand what what is going to go on. Uh, the first thing you're gonna notice is that I have a couple of, of save files here, but the main important one is this one over there. And the reason why this save file exists is because in order for me to speed run the game, I would need to complete the game to its its completion. And it gives me a couple of interesting perks. One of which is the most important one, and the other not really that important, but can be useful for this category spec up. So other than that, let us start the run. So we're going new game on easy mode, and we're gonna start the run in five, four, three, two, one. 新的城市, 新的开始, now, what is Afogato? Well, Afogato is a very unique game. It's part tower defense, or rather part reverse tower defense. So in the first part of the game, you're gonna see that I'm running through the entire stage and instead of me being a tower defense game where I actually place towers on the board, I'm basically playing the minions as navigating a labyrinth. And this labyrinth um, is in the law part of the person's mind. And basically, their mind is in this labyrinth. And while we talk about this, we're gonna do our first trick of the run, which is the chariot skip. There's a tutorial where it basically basically asks you to place a chariot, and you can skip it if you do it frame perfectly. And unfortunately, this is the only tutorial that we can skip. The other tutorials are for, and we have to play them out. And yeah, so just gonna go through this one. It's pretty much an auto scroller for the most part. So to make sure I place my the arrows correctly. So. The part of the reverse tower defense is that not only do I control the minions that are entering through the dungeon, but I also control the direction in which the which the, the minions will go through. And the goal is to try to kill the end boss tower, which is at the bottom here. And so what is the point of these labyrinths? So these labyrinths exist in someone's mind and the and those towers that the characters are in are basically demons and basically what we're doing is trying to re to exercise people out of demonic possession so this is the final boss of the run and this is the reason why the category is called save Aoi so we're going to try to save her from this demon so this is going to be quite simple so give me a moment I need to focus a little bit so this is a very very important final boss and obviously this will take a little bit of time Oh, wait, hold on. Um, crap. Oh, oh. Oh. Uh, oh, crap. Um, well, uh, well, 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 let's, um, well, okay, let's just go back in time and just re re refix this. Um, as a skill top of, of some of you will know, uh, this is an auto scroller section. Uh, there's no way to win this boss fight, and believe me, if there was a way, I could try, but it will probably take longer than the actual run itself. Anyways, let's get to the second part of the game. So I told you it was a part reverse tower defense. It's also a part coffee shop simulator. So we're gonna go to our coffee shop and we're controlling this person named Afogato. In saying the name. This is our landlord. His name is Dr. House. No, I'm kidding. This guy's actual name is Dr. Dave House. Don't ask him why there's a reference to that, but yes. Um, and he's a landlord of our new coffee shop. And our new coffee shop is effectively our life's work. And this other girl next to us is our archdemon buddy named Mephista. And basically, the, the story behind it is that Afogato is a good witch. And so a good witch teams up with an archdemon and does good witch stuff, which is basically exercising demons, which you might think it's a bit of a um, paradox considering we're working with demon to exercise demons, but the, believe me, the story is quite interesting and it's a worth a, a great um, hubba to do, do listen to. Anyways, now is the most skillful part of this entire run, coffee making. So the first part of the thing is an auto scroller. It forces us to just make the coffee as per uh, usual. Um, we don't like this 
where it basically forces us to do it because we're speedrunners and we obviously don't want to uh, force let the game force us to do all of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to just get past this tutorial stage, very simple, and we're going to get our first customer immediately. And who could that possibly be? Why, it's a reporter named Natalie, who is a part, part deer. So some of them, some of the characters in the game are part animals, and you're going to see a couple of good customers on that. And so obviously, because we are not auto-scrolling, not tutorializing, we finish this copy in a few seconds flat. What normally would take maybe around 10 seconds in the tutorial would literally take seconds. So you're going to see me do most of the copies really fast, well, I think sorry, most of the coffees being a bit of a misnomer, but I will explain why it's a misnomer. So, let us continue and let's go back. Oh, no, there's a, well, there's a customer that just came and it's closing time. So let's go and see what he wants. Now, it says here he's drunk, but we know that he needs, he, he probably has a demon being possessed as you see from our vision which allows us to see demons in characters so we're gonna see that he needs a little bit of a kick up up his um in a kind word a kick up his gut and we're gonna save him from the demonic possession so uh as we go through this stage which is mainly based on an auto scroller i'll explain a couple of things the main thing is that there are different types of enemies in this run and these things are called setbacks which basically um they basically shoot out these laser beams and they deal damage over time. We're speedrunning so we don't really need to care about the damage in some cases, but we mainly just need to worry about the about whether we can hit the hit our targeted goal without much difficulty. But I basically kind of mapped out most of the routes, so so sometimes like taking damage just to be faster is already be calculated upon. Um, this is one of those cases where there is a secret passage, and the secret passage is actually faster than the original path. And yeah, this is the, and it also gives us one of these shards, which will be important later. But just keep in mind about that as well. So we're gonna go to the boss, and you also note that I try not to um, well, I try not to impact the board very much. And you see, I don't really play other units as well as change the arrows too much, and that basically wastes about a couple of frames. I'm not so sure how many frames it does waste, but every action we we want to try to do as less actions as possible to get the end result. So in order to be fast, we basically need to have, find the best route and obviously the uh, best um, use of our actions, which is obviously less actions means better. So we will go and take our rest and we're gonna get our money and all that stuff and money isn't really useful in this route it's mainly used as a way to um basically allow us to get past the first boss stage because it, we have to pay for rent which is a scary <laughs> premonition but we do run a coffee shop so we do need rent <laughs> <and stuff. laughs> now this is our we i've said this for before the large lady in the, in the start was our, basically the demon possessing our way will try to save her. And we're here right now, and we're gonna basically serve her a coke. She actually wants something else, but apparently some person found that you could actually give give a coke to her and it basically skips the entire order and actually saves around 10 seconds. So, same goes for this lady right here named Lindsay who just disappeared on my screen and she's gonna disappear on my screen and now now there's two different languages to this game i'm playing it on the chinese version because it it saves me from having to hear a uh, high, high, higher pitch screen and oh sorry oops i meant to put this sorry they can can look similar i've just been so I'm supposed to add milk here, basically it skips past the first part, so it should be fine. I just forgot where, what the milk looked like for a second, but it's okay. So now we we'll get to the meat of this area. It goes, so I've talked about it being part reverse style defense, part coffee shop simulator. Now we're going to be doing part persona, at least the daylight, the daytime. So the daily life part of Persona. So we're gonna be... Well, it's basically a mishmash of a lot of things of different games like Arc Knight, Persona, and I don't know what's a good coffee making simulator, but it's there. So it basically tells us that we can do daily life stuff, 
and we don't really care about that because obviously this is a speedrun. So we're just gonna skip past the entire premonition of it and just go to a bookstore to just read because it's the closest. Remember guys, education is fantastic. Now we're getting into our late night and we're gonna close the coffee shop down even though we did kind of close it beforehand but we're gonna really really close it. We just left Mephista to handle the coffee stuff which she can't do coffee stuff so I don't know why, what the thing is. Oh there's a new character. So this is Sarah. Uh, she's a very important char character mainly because that she's well, I'm with the law why she's our friend, and she asked us to do something, and she's gonna ask us to make a mocha, which I would hate her for, but unfortunately... Yeah, she does want a mocha, so we have to serve her one. Okay, hold on. Need to focus, sorry. Oh, I forgot to turn on the whipped cream, and that should be the mocha done. Unfortunately, this is... Oh, did I make a mistake? Oh, did I forget to add something? Ah, okay, hold on, I was gonna reset that. Sometimes the game doesn't like, like when you go super fast because it doesn't, it doesn't register something. So what what happens is, is basically even though I input all the functions in, there may or may not be a chance that I don't, it doesn't go through. But it's okay. It just only wastes a couple, a uh, couple of ten seconds. It should be still fine. Right. So we got a new tarot card, and basically these units are based on tarot cards. So we got the Hermit card. The card that we use a lot more for damage dealing was called Strength. And we've now got the Hermit card. And these are gonna be useful cards for the next for the most part. And we're just gonna go sleep to our next day. And yeah, basically we are just doing skipping forward towards the specific days. In real time, we'll probably have around three or four days that we have to do all, everything that we need. So Aoi's back and she wants she wants a different drink this time, but I I defy all expectation and just give a cup of coke. Could you imagine if you go to a coffee shop and and ask for a literal coffee cup full of coke? Like this would be conceptually blasphemous to some people, but I don't really care. If you really want coke, you probably should go to a grocery store, not a coffee store. But I, who am I to judge though? So after we gave her coke. And suspiciously, it could have been Luke Wong Cook for all I know, but who knows at this stage. Uh, Sarah, earlier on, after giving her a mocha, she asked us to do a small little task to help. Say, so we have to go to this place called Jubilee Arcade, which is not an arcade, but just a street. But we're here in this arcade to basically find the person with demonic possession. I just need to make sure that I actually hit the person and not the, and not the store, because that has actually happened to me a couple of times. So now we've got a new unit called the Hermit, and the Hermit is very useful for for any, for any the speedruns because they allow us to gain these resources. And in order to play towers, you basically have to use this resource called Penta, which is on the bottom left. And the Hermit allows us to ge generate Penta every third attack. So it allows us to gain Penta much, much sooner than usual. But it's also a damage dealer. And that's mainly the the reason why we use the her permit. It's not really just because of the uh, her, the game. It's more about the it's more about the damage dealing aspect. And we want to have it because it's the hermit and the and strength actually do quite a lot of damage quite early. And since I use I usually send out hermit first. It's usually better to do so. So both strength and hermit are my main damage dealers for majority of this run. And you can going to see me play them more more often than not. So, we did this task for Sarah as we go into our very premium AFNF sponsored phone. Yes, I know it's ANFNF. And we're just, just telling Sarah, hey, the job is done and we need to go and see her. And we're just skipping past the next few parts. So, she asked us to go back to the coffee shop and, well, just basically just, just chat about the situation. So Sarah is actually going to ask us to do three tasks. 
And these tasks are basically to solve the problems in the, around the city. That I can't say why these problems exist, but she knows there are three of them, so we trust her that there are actually three of them. So, why, why these are important is because these three, three events are basically what defines the entire story. But for this speedrun, we're only, just, only going to do one of them, which is, the, which is the first one. Therefore, the name is called Save Aoi. Ao, and I'm going to switch to my school uniform here. And the reason why I'm switching to a school uniform here is because the next few parts, we need to wear the school uniform in order to access the different areas. And if we don't wear the school uniform, we basically waste time trying to get to the, the specific areas. And what specific areas do we need to go to? Well, Sarah asked us to basically go and investigate something about students that fell into a coma. And therefore, we are going to go to different to the, to the school which the students are from. So we're going to talk to these people with visualized eyes. So if you see that the main NPCs of the game do not have eyes, but the ones that are important do, we're going to talk to them. And that's not a... A creepy prospect but, but yeah we have to talk to them and basically they're just gonna tell us all the information about the school that we didn't know because we we're not from the school to, in, to begin with so just a bunch of people talking about specific things and we're gonna go to the upstairs so there is a specific order actually there's more than the four students that actually have it but i like i like to do it in a specific route so this is a specific route i've gone for and and it's a much better route than you than it calls for. So yeah, we're gonna it leads us to this classroom at 302. So we're gonna go to 302. And in and it basically just, my pistol basically tells us we need to activate our uh, witch's vision in order to see where the demonic presence are, and we found one, so we're just gonna go to this one. So another pretty much auto scrolling area, we just need to make sure that we get our the penta we need for strength as soon as we can and then we're just gonna just auto scroll this part move this there move this there and that should be about it so so again try to do as less actions with less actions with the best route it gets us there no time and you also know, so strength's ability I also never worries is that every third attack she actually deals more damage so she does allows us to if we can time it sort of perfectly, we can actually make sure that the third attack will hit the will hit the boss targets and it will actually increase the DPS of the boss very fast. And that's actually is a boon, so we always try to get get through that as quickly as we can. So now that is the first part of that run. The second part is going to be here. And we're gonna be basically going to cupboard over there. And now we're gonna be doing a couple more things. The first thing I'm gonna do is immediately I'm gonna purchase this card. And I'm really gonna upgrade my cards. Upgrading cards, basically, you will see that as I do each of the different uh, different stages, I'll get something known as soul fragments, and these are used to upgrade my cards. So I'm gonna upgrade max my hermit card, and I'm gonna upgrade my strength card. I also bought a card using the using a using the memory that I got. The memory I got was when I went to the secret passage in the second stage, and I it allows me to get more cards. So that's why I use. So I'm gonna put my strength here. It doesn't really matter at the start, start, start whether I place it in the down button or not, but it needs to be before this enemy right here. And as you see, I put the round quite a thingy so that it will basically kill all the targets by the time it reaches the end. If I don't do if don't time it right, it actually would be quite bad because it, it may not have enough DPS to kill the to kill that unit and that would mean that we'll have to basically do a reroute off the fly and that's not really good so I'm just glad I managed to get the timing correctly and we managed to finish the stage. Alright so we've investigated the school, we investigated class 302 and class 302 is effectively what was mostly done we basically just finished clearing the entire area and we are uh, let's move on towards the next part where we're searching for which is aurora memorial hospital and yeah we're just gonna check on the comatose patients themselves so we have to talk to this receptionist or nurse for that matter and then we're gonna go to the floor where the characters are sorry the people are sorry it's characters also as i walk up towards the thing i would like to show you our our premium sani monitors they're over there sani definitely not a ripoff of something so we're gonna go to 302 again because 
Because thinking of different numbers is hard. And let's go to our next one. So, it allows us to open a different character slot, which I'm mainly going to get the card which I got, which is Judgment. Now, we're going to get to the uh, the hardest part of this run, and I'll explain why it's the hardest part of this run. Because we're going to be playing um, around with a different, with some status effects. Now, they never really introduced status effects until now. So, this is an enemy that inflicts a status effect called Charm. And what Charm does is that it is that it basically makes the characters attack each other once the bar the meter is full. So you can see when I um hold on when I I need to get this card. So these cards basically give me uh stuff and the main thing I'm grabbing is skills. So so these cards they allow me to get additional resources, additional penta so I can grab it. But but this meter over there if it fills up the enemy we will start attacking each other and that's not really that good so we try not to do so and I think I made a small mistake but it should be fine I want to be safe yeah I think I will be safe I, mean, I usually wouldn't do this but I think I made a small mistake so I'm just gonna be safe here for this boss then heal that's okay the great thing about this is that even if you do get a bad run Afogato actually is quite lenient in terms of how you placement as long as you know like the backup that you have and in this case is I kind of moved it into the wrong area so I'm just gonna re uh I just rerouted them so they could get the card that gets a healing card. So they're basically two cards which is the zero card that basically gives me five penta and the two penta card which gives me healing and basically knowing when to play this is also very important. Except for you the zero one. The zero one is you usually want to play it when when you need specifically uh, a boost immediately off the bat. So this next part is not as difficult, but we do have to make sure we hit the correct targets first as we go along. So this part, I'm going to hit this because we're going to be taking a lot of damage from the setback, and I rather have like some backup in case we we do need the healing. But I'll just make sure they will always hit this target, and we'll do do like a drive by. And we'll go for this one so that I can heal them as they go along and then we will get judgment furthest away. Now I don't know why but usually this part is actually faster to do it this way but I do want to just do a backup in case I made a mistake here so I'm just gonna make sure I can kill the target right there. And as it moves along to see, I have to basically consistently change directions to make sure that when I um, play the target, I'm actually doing the most damage. So repeated routes like going back and forth actually do more damage than than just than just go go drive by as I, as they will call it. So it's better to just do it this way, and we get. So basically, what we've done is we basically try to get these clues here, and these clues. Showcase the roof, and we're gonna go to the roof to try to save the save the person who is currently being possessed by Dina, which is Aoi. And yeah, so that's pretty much the entire day. Our entire day is basically finishing these four stages and basically finding out who what's the cause of the students that fell into comatose, and we found out it's Aoi because of the figure in the thing looks like her, and we're just going to go go to sleep, and then the next day we're going to try to save her. So we're getting to the end of this run, it's... I would say again, a lot of this part of the run is more skill based. So you're gonna see me focus a lot more on this part, but I'll explain what is going on as much as I can. So the first part is very simple, we just need to get to the roof in the first place. And I need to remember that it should be the right side and not the left side, because apparently the left side roof access is blocked off, so the right side is the only way that we can get to the roof, so... If I don't remember this, uh, it's usually a, a gone run, and at this point, if I get a gone run, it's really bad. So we have to go up five, four flights of stairs to get to the roof. And the roof is currently called the fifth floor, but it it's basically the roof. And as you can see, as we enter the roof, there's a lot of black mist, mist outside. Definitely not dangerous. And, oh, there's a demon orb right there. So let's go ahead and save our. Uh, but before we save Aoi, we actually do need to to get past the gatekeeper. 
And this is one of those things that is really auto scrolly and it's the first thing, first trick that we kind of found in this run, which was basically this entire setup is really just a farce in a way, where there's no re reason to even bother about them. We just need to make sure that we can hit the target right here. And I'm just gonna make sure the I have enough. I don't really oh. Well, let me just Okay, let me try that again because I think there's a mistake here, but we'll see. They may have increased the damage over the time, but it's okay. I'm gonna try it one more time and if it doesn't work, I'm just gonna do, do a small backup. So... Might have to play the healer unit, but we'll see first. I think I may have put them too early, but we'll see. I'm gonna slow it down. Yeah. Try that. Okay, let's see if this works. Does it? Oh, it does, okay. So I think I. Oh no, it doesn't. Okay, I'm just gonna do the backup then. Yeah, I think they've updated the damage numbers of these, which makes a lot of sense. It's, a, it's a, been a while since I played this, so I'm just gonna do the backup just to. just to make sure I can actually kill the boss in the first place. Let me just do that. Okay, let me just do that. So it's gonna do a bit differently to what I usually do, which is effectively just clear the stage. Then in a way that basically doesn't uh, jeopardize my unit's safety because I usually wouldn't care about it, but since the thing kind of gave me a bit of a jeopardy, so I might have to do a small mini boss first before I do this, I think, because I don't think they have enough tankiness in order to get past. I might have to do a rearrangement, but usually we would be able to do so, but it's okay. We can just get past that, no issue. Okay. Let's see how much I need to make sure we can get this guy. Get this guy. This will be fine. We'll just put the healer unit. So the healer unit works when it's in proximity to the, to the character, so I'm just gonna have to run back and forth for a bit for, for a while just to make sure I can get the guy going. Just gonna drop him off and... Do... Yeah, I think this should be fine. I might not get this down. Mm. A bit of a detour, but I think we should be fine now. Yeah. Alright. So apologies again, I think we made a small mistake there, but I think it should be fine now. Could be, I think I missed the level up spot, but you know it's okay. I think we can still manage to do it with the four characters that we have. I'm just gonna let it go here so that I can reset all the positions first, and then we're just gonna go for it. And... Okay, so I think we should be fine for the boss, but obviously if there isn't, then it's kind of sucky, but it should be fine. I'm just gonna force attack the boss so it's easier, but I think it's now. Okay, great. Okay, I think there was not another bug that just happened. Uh, kind of weird bugs that kind of happened in this game. But like, I think the game also isn't like fully made properly, so there are a couple of jumps over there. But it's okay. It's a great game. Game, and it's sort of a game that really tests your mind. Mind because it's um, it's very challenging. The, the difficulties are very very is a very how to say in a in a way it's quite challenging. The hardest difficulty really, really challenges you challenges your mind because it really forces you to have to really think about specifically a lot of cut a lot of your what your cards do and stuff. So see of what my cards do, I'm gonna immediately start upgrading all my cards to as high of a level as possible. Oh dang 
Oh, I see. Oh, I see what happened. I think what I think they actually increased the the threshold of the of the soul points. Okay, that makes things interesting. I think it should be quite simple to fight this boss then. So usually I would have a, maybe a little bit of difficulty with this boss because I don't have enough damage. But I think these change they made a change that actually increased all the thresholds, so it should be actually faster to do the, the final boss than I thought. Or at least more consistent. Because uh, my usual problem with the final boss is that I don't have enough damage for the second phase. And now I think I might have enough damage for the second phase. We'll see though. I may be wrong though, but I I think I do have more damage in the second phase than I think. We'll see. Yeah. Okay, you did! Nice! Okay, we did have enough damage for the second phase. Alright, so I need to relocate my characters to the side as we're doing the final boss. Um, and the reason is because there is an enemy that actually spawns it, that, that one of those setbacks that actually kind of ruins my day if I don't do it in this way, so I have to relocate them there, and then it's just back to whacking the boss. I just need to make sure I don't die from doing this, but it should be fine. I think we're looking pretty good. This is a good run. Yeah, this is a really good run. So we just need a damage. We don't need any cap with the setback. We have a backup healing in case, backup healer in case we do, but we shouldn't need it. Even if one of our characters dies, we should be fine. Like so. And time is gonna happen when I... When I press the continue button on the next screen, so time ends in right about now. And I'm just gonna skip past this cutscene because it's a bit dicey for Twitch standards, so just think of it as she almost slips and falls. So, right now, bad run. And yeah, it's a bit of a mishap now and then, but I think I'm quite satisfied with it. it. If I was going for faster, we would try to do it in probably around 26 minutes, but I'm just quite satisfied with it. So thank you guys for what, watching my run of Afogato. And if you want to check out the game, I believe the Steam Spring sale is going on, so maybe on sale, but I could be wrong. But it, it's a great game if you want to try something that is similar to Persona in some form or fashion, it's similar to a, a bunch of other genres. And yeah, that's pretty much about it. Um, as they talk about it, I'm just gonna get off the screen. So there's a lot of cutscenes going on, it's a lot of story, but let's move on towards the end of the run. So it went a bit, couple of minutes over time, I apologize, but I think it should be... A couple of minutes should be fine, and... Yeah, I believe... That this is the end of my... Foray here? Um... The next run... Which is gonna come out is... I believe is Ultima 4? So... So, I guess... If you would like to check me out, you can check my YouTube. I'm on mainly on YouTube. I may stream now and then, but other than that, you're gonna catch me when I usually speak either Apogato or any other game that I adore, like Stardew Valley and Octopath Traveler. And thank you guys for watching again, and have a nice one. Goodbye.